Here we're gonna look at a nice geometry problem. So this comes from the book about Japanese temple geometry, which I've mentioned on the channel before called Sacred Geometry. And I'll put some information on the screen about this book right now if you guys wanna check it out. There's also a link in the description. Okay, so let's say we've got this equilateral triangle with side length two, and then we have these two lines that I have in yellow, which go from these two vertices of the equilateral triangle to the opposite sides. And we've constructed these two lines so that if you put a circle tangent to the two lines in the side of the triangle down here, and a circle that is tangent to the two sides of the triangle here and the two lines here, you get equal radii. So notice you don't get equal radii all of the time. If we were to move these two points down, then you would increase the radius of the top circle and you would decrease the radius of the bottom circle. Furthermore, if you were to move these two points up, you would increase the radius of the bottom circle and decrease the radius of the top circle. So in fact, these lines are in special positions. And our goal is to find the radii of these circles given this setup. Okay, good. So first off, we want to introduce some notation for some of the vertices. So let's maybe go ahead and call this vertex A, this thing vertex B, and this thing vertex C. Next, we'll call this intersection point right here D, this intersection point right here E. Then finally, we'll call this intersection point here of the two yellow lines F. So now that we have all of those, those are like all of the kind of points that are built into the picture. Let's go ahead and introduce some more line segments. So the first line segment we wanna introduce goes for, from the center of this circle to the edge of the circle, which is also the edge of the triangle. So maybe I'll put this constructed line segment in orange. So like I said, from the center of this circle, which we'll call O for like the origin of that circle, out here to the circle and the triangle. So that means we know that this is normal to the triangle because we know that it intersects the circle at a 90 degree angle, but since the line segment is also tangent to the circle, it'll uh, intersect that at a 90 degree angle too. So let's maybe call this point of intersection here H and point out that we know that this is length R. We'll introduce another radius to this circle as well. So that'll go from our point O to this yellow line segment over here. Again, creating a 90 degree angle with this yellow line segment for the same reason that we had just talked about. So here we'll make that radius. So we also know that this has length R and we'll call this point right here point K. Now we wanna do something pretty similar down in this circle, although we'll only introduce one radius here. So let's maybe call this point right here P and then we'll make a radius from the center of that circle to this line segment where it intersects our circle. So here we'll have that length right here, which we know is length R because that's the radius of that circle as well. And we'll call this point right here capital R. So not to be too confusing, but capital R is a point and little r is the radius of the circle. So next, maybe we'll draw an altitude for the whole equilateral triangle. I'll do that in blue. So let's say we've got a point from here all the way down. So notice it goes through all of these points, landing down here at the bottom. So I'll call that point Q. Next, we wanna take some measurements. So since this is an equilateral triangle with side length two, we know that the length down here is one because CQ bisects CB. Now we can apply the Pythagorean theorem to this triangle AQC to find the length of this altitude. And the length of that altitude will be square root of three because we want one squared plus this squared to be equal to two squared, which is four, so that gives us square root of three here. So let's maybe go ahead and put this here in blue. We know the side length there is square root of three. Now next, we can see that this is a 30 degree angle, 
and then this is also a 30 degree angle, and then this is a 90 degree angle. So by the angle, angle, angle theorem, AOH is going to be similar to ACQ, but that means that the side lengths are proportional, and they're gonna be proportional but with a proportionality constant of R. So we've got a side length of one here, side length of R here. So that's gonna make this, which is the altitude of this AHO triangle, square root of three times R. So those are two important measurements. So next we're gonna introduce one more line segment into this picture. And then we're gonna calculate the area of the right hand half of this equilateral triangle two different ways. Okay, so the line segment that we will introduce will go from B to O. So let's see if we can draw that in here. That goes like this. Now we're ready to calculate the area of triangle AQB. And we're gonna do that two different ways. One, just by taking the area of the whole triangle, and then by adding up the area of a bunch of the component triangles. So let's see how that goes. So like I said, we'll have area of triangle AQB. So that's gonna break down into the following pieces. So we'll have area of triangle AOH. So let's see what that is. That's gonna be this one up here, AOH. Good, so we've taken care of that bit. Plus twice times the area of triangle OHB. Okay, so let's see which one that is. So OHB is this thing with the orange line segment and the purple line segment. And why do we do tw two of them? Well, that's because we've got this half and this half of this little object, and those are congruent to each other. So that's not too hard to check that those are congruent to each other. So we need two copies of this. So we'll have two copies of this triangle, but that means that we've overcounted a little bit because the bottom part spills over to the left of the blue line. So we have to subtract the area of triangle OFK. So let's go ahead and do that. We have to subtract the area of triangle OKF. So like I just said, we added twice this triangle, which is equivalent to this triangle plus this triangle, but then we had to subtract the area of this triangle right here. Now next, we'll add twice the area of triangle PBQ. So let's see which triangle that is. So PBQ is that triangle down here. So let's maybe draw that in green with the extra line segment. And then why twice? Because we've got this little piece right here and this little piece up here. Now that's almost everything. The only little piece that we lack at this point is this triangle here, which is given by FPR. So let's go ahead and add that in. So plus the area of triangle FPR. Now next, we want to notice that two of these triangles are congruent to each other. And in fact, two of the triangles with opposite signs are congruent to each other. So let's maybe go ahead and note that triangle OKF is congruent to triangle FPR. So that's like this little triangle right here and this little triangle right here. So let's see why that is. They share these two opposite angles. And then next, they share these two right angles. So we know by the angle, angle, angle theorem, they're similar but they also have this side length of measurement R, and so that makes them similar. So that means we can make this cancellation of this guy with that guy. So let's just maybe shade these in red to see exactly what is canceling. So the area of those two are canceling. So now we've got a nice equation that we can turn into something that is more algebraic. So let's look at the left-hand side of this. We have area of triangle AQB. So notice this has altitude square root of three, 
and it has side length one because we know QB is one. So that makes this whole left hand side equal to the square root of three over two because we have one half base times height. Okay, nice. Then next we decompose it into all of these areas. So area of AOH. So check it out, we've got R times root three r, and then we've got to divide by two, so that'll give us root three over two times r squared, okay? And then next we'll have plus twice times the area of OHB, so let's talk through OHB. So our altitude is r, so we're gonna have one half, and then like, we'll, like I said, we have r, and then this base is gonna be given by two, because that's the whole side length minus square root of three r. So we have two minus root three times r, like that. So that would be this triangle right here, like I just pointed out. And now we've got this one down here, which is PBQ. So let's see, PBQ, so that shouldn't be too hard to see. So here we've got plus two. We know that this length right here is R, and then this length right here is one. So we've got twice one half times R. So it all boils down to that right there. So now let's see if we can simplify this a little bit. So I'll leave this root three over two on the left hand side. Then we'll have root three over two r squared plus, so this two and this half will cancel. Then the r will distribute through to give us two r minus root three r squared like that. And then next we'll have plus r. Okay, so let's see what that gives us in the end. So we've got root three over two r squared minus root three r squared. So those will cancel and leave us with a minus root three over two r squared. And then next, this two r and this r cancel to a plus three r. And then maybe we'd wanna multiply both sides of the equation by two to kill the denominators and that'll give us root three equals minus root three r squared plus six r, like that. Now we can maybe simplify that a little bit more and that'll give us root three r squared minus six r plus root three equals zero. So we've got this nice quadratic equation that we can use to solve for r. Okay, let's maybe go ahead and bring that up and we'll solve that equation. So far, we've surmised that the radius that we're looking for satisfies the following quadratic equation. So we've got root three times r squared minus six r plus three equals zero. Now what I wanna do is maybe divide both sides of this by the square root of three. I think that'll just make it a little simpler to solve. So that gives us r squared minus six over root three r plus one equals zero. Now next, maybe we'd like to rationalize this thing right here so we could multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of three. So that's gonna give us three in the denominator, which can cancel with the six in the numerator, leaving us with two. Now we have something a bit more manageable. So we have r squared minus two times square root of three r plus one equals zero. Now we might as well use the quadratic formula at this point. So we have r equals negative b. So that'll be two root three plus minus the square root of b squared. So let's see, that's gonna be four times three, which is 12 minus four times a times c. So that's gonna be minus four all over two a. So that's two. But here, this is gonna be the square root of eight, which is the same thing as two times the square root of two. So that gives us a radius of root three plus minus root two after canceling that two that's in the denominator. But you might say, well, which one do we keep? And we in fact must keep the one which is square root of three minus square root of two. And that's because if we had two circles of radius square root of three plus square root of two, that wouldn't even fit inside of this circle. But maybe post in the comments what kind of geometric picture that would line up with. Okay, that's a good place to stop.